enjoyed. I know it's late, but this is going to be a fantastic conversation, I promise. Please welcome Ophir Grazer. Thank you. I have, a, I have a lot to ask. I'm sure the audience will have some questions too. They all want to know, do they get back together? You're not allowed to ask that. <laughs> well, no, no, do they get back together at the end? We're going to keep them from asking that. Um, <laughs> tell me about the inspiration to this. Where did this come from? There is a story which is uh, not my story, but the story of many people I knew um, throughout all, all my life since I was a teenager, uh, the story of double life, people who lead double life, um, straight mar married men who have affairs with other men, um, straight married men who have an affair with a younger or another woman, a woman who has a husband but also has another guy from the from from the from the side. Um, this double life story is something that I've encountered a lot. In a specific case, is a friend of mine who uh, was uh, also having this story. Uh, he was running a double life. He had a wife, three children, and. Um, and uh, very successful uh, work in the community and everybody knew him and he was having affairs with men. And I knew him, I knew his wife, I knew his children, I knew his family, I was even a guest in their home. And uh, one day I got an email from his wife where she wrote me that he died from uh, cancer. And um, what I understood is that uh, after he died, she found out that he was having a double life all these years. And uh, one of the interesting things that happened to me in the last year, that I've almost a year that I've been presenting this film all over the world, from China to um, the States, uh, Europe, uh, Israel, uh, so many countries, and almost every place I visit after the screening, people come to me, one or two people tell me they know a similar story. So this is the main source of inspiration was this story of this person that I knew. And everything else in the film, um, which is not just this uh, double life or the, the, the death or the, the death of, and the discovery afterward, everything, let's say, about the setting of the film, Jerusalem, Berlin, is uh, for me. Our religious father, secular mother, is for me. Um, Food is for me. <laughs> so I just put my, I just took this story and I put my, my life in it very much and uh, this is how I created a film. Um, beautiful. I, I have to say that, um, that one of the amazing things about this movie is, yes, the, the concept of a double life is something that's, leading a double life is something that can be completely universal and yet this film is filled with so much personal as you're putting it, and so much, you know, Jerusalem, so much, so many, I mean, even that little detail at the end, the siren, that I'm sure most of the people who see this film have no idea why there's a siren going over Jerusalem um, and somebody yelling Shabbat. I mean, you, you filled that in to help the audience a little bit, but, but this is something so unique and so, so deep within the, an internal culture that you manage to tell a universal story because it's so, I feel, it is so true to the internal culture of Israel and um, it allows it to translate to so many languages and really one of the most beautiful things about it is really it's not going into any of the cliches that we expect I feel and and uh, allows you just to tell a story about people yeah people it's a uh, it's um it's what I wanted to do is talk about people. I mean, there is all these aspects of religion and, 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 and all this aspect about the sexuality and all, all of these things, but I want to put them aside and say this is about uh, free people, like a triangle, free people, uh, one who is gone and the two who, are, uh, who miss him. And it's about them. And all this uh, nationality and religion and sexuality and all these uh, definitions and all of these categories, they become uh, less important or unimportant. So Fabulous. Um, the acting is fantastic. 
really unbelievable. I mean, uh, um, I, I was watching it now. This is my second time or third time seeing the movie, and I'm just amazed by them. Um, tell us a little bit about how you found your actors. The the German actor is a very specific. Uh, I mean, it's a very simple thing. I just I, I casted him. I, I knew uh, Thomas, the character. I I know him for. I mean, it took me eight years to do the film, and during eight years, I knew Thomas. I knew who he is, but I, I had no idea who is who can be Thomas. So uh, I had to cast him. I went through all the acting agencies in uh, in Berlin, and uh, I invited a lot of actors for. Um, auditions and uh, a f very very long uh, uh, process, and in the end, uh, I narrowed the list down, 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 and I was not happy. And then, completely by chance, I found him, and uh, it was through a demo reel. You know, actors they have a demo reel, they have a video where they show parts from all the movies. Usually, it's really, really horribly made, like cut uh, without and you know, some silly music, you know. And this guy just had a monologue. And I, mean, I watched more than a hundred show reels, and when I watch it, it's just a monologue, just him sitting, talking almost, almost to the camera, like to a person next to the camera. And when I saw this monologue, I was, I was like, okay, I need to see him because I knew that there is a, there should, I knew that during the film he's not going to talk a lot. He's going to be quiet. Um, he's going to talk through his hands. And he will have a monologue, one monologue when he's talking about his childhood. And when I saw this actor, Tim, doing uh, the monologue, I, 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 I got a, 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 to meet him. And then I, I casted him. And he, was, uh, he had to gain eight kilo. And he had to learn how to bake, and he did. He did all of it, and he did it really, really great. And then so it's, they're, they're connected. You bake and you eat. You bake. It's exactly. It's a good way to do it. He did it. I mean, I went to 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 Jerusalem to prepare the shoot, and uh, he would uh, make uh, cakes, and he would send me on WhatsApp photos of what he did, and I would write him, "This is not good enough," or "It's not nice enough." I don't know. Yeah, so I can't. This, I can't imagine making this movie and not gaining eight kilo. It's yeah. like you know, it's those yeah. cakes alone, yeah. um, dangerous. Um, and Sarah Adler, of course, who plays. Uh, yeah, Sarah. I mean, I mean, like all the Israeli actors except Roy Miller, who's playing Owen. Uh, him, I really also had to cast him in Israel. But all the other ones, the Sarah Adler, who's playing the wife, the widow, uh, Zohar Strauss, who plays the brother-in-law. Moti and uh, Sandra Sadeo plays the grandmother. Um, the three of them, I knew I want to have them for eight years. And uh, in the end, uh, when we went to finally shoot the film, it was just about convincing them because we had no, we had no money. Uh, but with Sarah, it was a bit different because in Sarah, I met her 2012, uh, uh, five years before the shoot, I met her. And I just, my producer arranged the meeting and I just pitched her the story and she said, okay, nice, when you make the film, let, I, I, I might do it. So she had to. <laughs> I might do it. She probably didn't smile much. She yeah. had one smile at the end of the movie. Um, by the way, a great, a great scene now as we're watching their, their first, the first time they get together, I noticed um, that whole scene in the kitchen is in one shot. Well, one shot until they kiss, and then you go into to a, a close up. But yeah. in, in in a way that 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 it's their chemistry that's working there, and feeling the awkwardness of all of it is a, a lot a lot on their shoulders. And um, you did a great job in directing them. Um, I I wanted to ask um, I wanted to get into it. Uh, a little bit deeper for me. I know we're not allowed to ask if they end up together. I, I made that rule. Um, why does she go back to Germany at the end? What do you think? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fair. For me, it's obvious. You know, I think it's... Uh, it's uh, For me, too. I'm, uh, I mean, if I have to explain, you know, okay, I can give my, my, my understanding of it because it's not me. It's them, you know. It's their story. And uh, I think she just had to... I don't know. She had to see him. She had to feel him. She had to forgive him, like... She had to see this cafe, you know, this cafe credence was hunting her for such a long time and and uh, she just had to do it. 
and that's what they that's what they do in this movie when they are driven by by these ghosts they they have to go after them and then get a job in their cafes and i'm making up my own ending um i'd love to to open it um to open it to questions from the audience if uh, anybody has and i see a hands up already hi thank you very much for this great movie I'm very curious to know how the film was accepted in Germany. What kind of reviews did you receive? Well, I, we didn't have any much reviews because the film hasn't been distributed in Germany. Uh, we've been uh, trying to look for a distributor for, in Germany for almost a year. And we found distributors in 15 countries, including Taiwan and South Korea. But uh, Germany, we just uh, got a distribution deal last week, so we have no idea. I did show it in a couple of festivals and where I was present, and the uh, reaction was very positive from the audience. I mean, but uh, I can't really say much. We have a question right here in the middle. Wait for the mic, please. I have a very simple question. I was not going to ask it, and then my mother turned to me and said, I just have one question. And it was the same question as mine. So uh, I felt in the movie that the grandma, the mother, the grandmother knew. And I just want to know if, I mean, that is something that you would suggested that we feel or? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Just a feeling. I mean, it's not, uh, uh, you know, it's not that she's going to say all the details. We don't, it's not about her knowing the details or not, but it's, it's, I think it's uh, something, it's about some kind of uh, instinct, some kind of a feeling. From the second she sees him, when she comes to the cafe in the evening, I think already then she knows. Not knows in the term of details and uh, little, you know, information to know, you know, to feel, and, uh, yeah. Why? I think the main thing beyond it is uh, that I want to have some, some sympathy, some sympathy in these people, you know. This was her son, he's dead, you know, she lost him, and she stays alone in this uh, place. She does, there is no husband, there is no, uh, there was no father. And this uh, understanding, this human understanding, which is, again, beyond uh, religion and tradition. She's a religious woman, you know, but still she's able to invite him to her home to cook together, you know. It's uh, sympathy, it's uh, em empathy, empathy, this is the word I was looking for. Yeah. It, it, the film doesn't go too deeply into German Jewish relations, um, and, and I think there's a lot of subtext there. That you know, there's this new generation of Israelis that are living a lot. A lot of Israelis live in Berlin. Uh, there's a lot of back and forth between Berlin and Israel, and um, it's interesting that it's the grandmother, the older generation, that is actually in some ways most uh, accepting and, and open to it. And I feel that, uh, that she might have also been the most open and accepting to her son um, with that same character. She's somebody who, who clearly knew some things, but knew her son and, um, and enough to also read between the lines and figure out what's going on a little better than everyone else around them who thinks that they're so smart. Sorry, my, my take on that. There's a question right here. Or, Hi, um, the core story reminded me of another movie, and I just wondered whether uh, you know about you know about it, or you were influenced by it. It is the movie France by Francois Ozon. Ah, France! Uh, I saw it uh, way after I finished editing the movie, so no good move. But, but when I saw France, I was very, I was happy, to, very happy to see it because. I really felt uh, there are uh, some uh, re some connections, and I and I and I love the uh, I love the film very much. Very beautiful very film, France. Hi, um, I had a question just about the way you shot the movie a bit. Um, you had there were a lot of close ups, a lot, a lot, a lot of close ups, very intensely throughout the movie, and 
you know, I mean, obviously close-ups are to get kind of into the scene, but it was almost kind of overwhelming, I, I guess, at some point. So I was just curious about what about what you had in mind. And then secondly, Tom, Thomas, he had some very emotional scenes, but many scenes he was just very flat, just very kind of like there. And I was just wondering, again, sort of what that was about, what you were trying to do, or is that his acting style or your style? It's a, a mixture. I mean, Thomas is... is it's... Um, the, let's say the, the the way I instructed him is uh, to be in a situation of uh, like in a post trauma, like he's in shock all the movie, and then when the one moment in the movie where he gets very emotional, so it has a I believe a stronger effect because we used to f- see him as somebody who might who's not really able to to express much feeling. This is let's say the intention. Beyond, beyond that, and um, about uh, the close-ups, I just love close-ups. Um, I just, love, I mean, it's uh, cl- c- close-ups is, is something that uh, it, it it's something that allows us to look at things in a way that we cannot look look at them in real life, especially in the cinema and the big screen. If you watch it on the small screen on a laptop, it will not have the same effect. But we never get a chance to really observe things like. We can with with the close up, and uh, it's a wonderful uh, gift, I think, of the cinema and the zoom. Also, the zoom. I, I love to use the zoom lens. The zoom when we zoom slowly. It's also it's only cinema has it. You don't have it in painting. You don't have it in dance. You don't have it in theater. You have it only in the cinema where you go close, 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 but you still remain keep your distance. It's beautiful too, and I think the most wonderful movies made, which is the, I think the, the films made in the 70s, 60s and 70s, all over the world, mostly Italian, French, American movies, they all have this zoom. It's always zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. I love it. It's beautiful. I don't know who's closer. <laughs> which microphone will get to you first? No, no, just if you could use the mic, because otherwise uh, we can't... Uh... I was just going to add that the close-up I love was of, of the wife, you know, when after she had made love with, and you see her face, how it changes. I thought that was wonderful. One of my favorite shots. So, thank you. I'm coming. Thank you. It was beautiful. Um, something that struck me, though, about the kosher, not kosher thing and um, letting in the other, letting in the outsider, and how her brother was so against it. Um, and then it ultimately hurt her. And um, was that intentional? Sure. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. But I mean, that's such a commentary about what's happening in the world today. You know, everyone wants to be so insular. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I, I, I worked in uh, so many restaurants. Since I was 16, I worked in, in Israel in a lot of restaurants. And we always had this uh, thing when the, uh, the, the, the mashgiach, the guy who is the, the observer or whatever you call it, he would come and, you know, open two drawers, you know. It had, had absolutely nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with tradition. It, has not, it was just pure uh, uh, money uh, mafia, really. And... Uh, and, and uh, there is something really interesting happening now in the last years, in, in mostly in Jerusalem, because in Jerusalem, kosher is really important for business. This is uh, not the main theme of the film, but it's there. Uh, something really interesting that a lot of business, they have what they, they create a new kosher, which is based on the, the ways in which Jews used to, religious Jews used to keep kosher hundred years ago and a thousand years ago, trust in each other. There was a, some kind of a trust uh, certificate is that uh, we are saying we are religious, our we, father is religious, our uh, tradition is religious, we keep the rules, we only eat kosher, and this is how we cook in the kitchen, and we don't want to pay, the, to pay any authority. You're welcome to stay or leave. And many people, religious Orthodox people, go and eat there because they trust them, you know. So, and uh, the reason I put this in, in the film, like, 
One of the reasons is uh, because I wanted to show, um, I don't know, I wanted to, to show how um, even the food, which is important for the story, is somehow uh, uh, limited or controlled by society in a way. And uh, how this affects this woman. She just wants her business to work. You know, it's all she cares about is clients will come and will be happy. You know, she doesn't care about the uh, thing. And it's not that she doesn't respect uh, religion and tradition. When she's, she's doing Shabbat, she tells her son, do you want to do the prayer? We can do it, yes or no. Let's, whatever you want, let's do it. And she does it, you know. So it's a, I think it's about uh, showing that people just want to, you know, have their own way of doing things and not being controlled and not being, you know, observed all the time. And another reason why it's a part of the story is also because I wanted that when Thomas comes to Jerusalem, he doesn't understand because you cannot understand it if you come from the outside. My father is religious, so I understand it. I, I even understand the logic behind it. But uh, if you're a secular person, if you're an, or if you're an outside, this is really a shock to understand it. So. so. Can she have a microphone, please? Sorry. Thank you. The part that um, was so clear and the mystery of it is because she let him in against her brother's advice, against the rabbi's advice, that ended up breaking her heart or hurting her in some way. Maybe that's too strong to say broke her heart. You know, she let in the outsider, the foreigner. Yeah, yeah but maybe this was her way of, uh, um, how you say it, um, rebel. When she let him inside, she rebelled. She said, and this is my place. I'm going to take him. And she comes to a place at the end, of course, after all of it, where she is running her place in a way that she feels that she can be somewhat even honest about it and, and more free to say, you know, you could eat here or not eat here, it's kosher. Um, and I think that's, that was a step forward for her. I know there's a lot of other questions, but um, uh, um, the film will open in theaters at the end of June. So please, first of all, seeing it again is fantastic. See it a second time and tell your friends to see it twice too. Um, Ophir, thank you. thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming, folks, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at other screenings. Please stay in touch. Thank you.